going on guys? Welcome to day four of the Icarus Trophy race. I'm in Nephi in uh, Utah. Today's flight, I'm attempting to cross a gigantic mountain range. It goes up to 10 and 11,000 feet and make it out to an airport called Huntington. Today we have an east wind, which gives me a headwind like the whole day. So I'm not expecting too much progress, but if I can make it into like Monument Valley or something, that would be super rad. I'm gonna stick my GoPro on my head. We're gonna go on this flight together. It's only like 57 miles, but with the terrain and the headwind, it might use every ounce of fuel I've got. So let's send it. GoPro is rigged. By the way, last night I got a sunscreen and some aloe lotion. Well, this was my humble abode for the night. I slept right here on the floor. Probably the worst night of sleep I've ever had. So the wind has come out of pretty much every single direction it can come out of. I'm gonna run my strobe just because we're close to uh, sunrise. Let's check it out. So the scout is not feeling too well. My clutch is kind of no longer. It's just engaged all the time, which means yesterday when I tried to start it <clears throat> on my back, I couldn't. I'm gonna have to start her on the ground and just keep it running the whole time. See that? It's not healthy. She's a little tired. There we go. Come on, baby. Duct tape still holding up. Yeah, 20 something hours with no maintenance has taking a toll on my poor motor. Uh, let's get clipped in. I think the wind has most consistently been coming out of the south, which is awkward because that's not what it was predicted to do. I've gotten everything pretty well down to a system. I think it's really important to like, concentrate and just focus on everything you're doing for these launches, especially the no wind ones. Because if you're out here struggling, then you just get frustrated and blow a launch. Who knows? I'm taking it slow and I might still blow this launch and get frustrated. Ugh. Back pain setting in, ready to get off the ground. Poor scout, I feel so bad. I normally take really good care of my equipment and this whole time, Motor's just been mistreated. Well, there goes a bunch of gasoline. All over my Carhartt bag. I'm just gonna take a quick breather, relax, feel the vibe. Moment of silence, and I'll do it. it is to nail a launch like that. Oh yeah. Back pain. I gotta get some altitude. That bad boy is about 11,000 feet at the peak. But I'm gonna go through this pass, I think. And then north around the next mountain range. And then south. So there's kind of been a trade-off. These morning flights are super cold, but the air is smooth. There's not much active piloting needed normally, but you sit here and freeze. The midday flights, yesterday I flew without gloves across the salt flats. That was a nice treat, because I could actually use my phone without using my nose as the poker. But it was so turbulent, I had to be active piloting the whole way through. So that was a pain. <laughs> Check out the medevac helicopter down there. I'm hoping things are nice and still, that I can just go around these big tall mountains without getting much turbulence. I think it's super rad that in Utah, they put these letters on the mountains. I'm starting to feel a little bit of turbulence, but it's not bad. I may have to do a little bit of weaving to 
to gain more altitude. And it would be like the worst nightmare to realize I like left my phone or something on the charger back at that place. Dude, I'd be so upset. I'd have to come in for a landing and unclip, do that launch again. So there's a highway that cuts through to my right. I'm probably gonna try to favor that just in case I have a motor out. I just measured before I left. Yesterday, I think I covered 240 something miles. The day before was just over 300, but those were in pretty favorable conditions. Today, once the wind gets cranking, I think it's gonna be giving me mostly a headwind. So I don't know if I'm gonna get those numbers, but the total from this airport to all my checkpoints to the end, was 488 miles so if i can knock out 250 each day i'll be done in uh like tomorrow night that would be super rad if i can make it to monument valley tonight i would be like the happiest person on earth i don't think my ground speed is that bad at all so i'm gonna check my app see where i'm looking and see what my ground speed is I got 29 on my ground speed, which is pretty good. 27, 26, not bad. At that speed, it says I only have an hour and a half till my destination, which is awesome because, like I said, it's not that far away. Absolutely beautiful. You know, a lot of times on this race, I've been solely focused on flying because of turbulence or navigating or my fuel situation or something. But you always gotta like, just take a look around and really absorb the moment every so often. It's easy to kind of overlook how beautiful everything is when you're focused on keeping your wings stable or navigating. I think I see the second mountain range. It's out on the horizon. And that one is pretty hefty, so I'm probably going to end up cutting to the north once I get over this one. Alright, so I've basically made it through this first pass. Up next is over this ridge, and then the far one on the horizon. So I'm going to cut the GoPro, and I'm just going to focus on navigating, making sure I got enough fuel to get there. Peace out, we'll see ya at the landing. My GoPro is gonna last. It uh, is on zero battery, but I've made it over the mountains. That was a really amazing stretch of land. It like plateaued for a while around 10,000 feet and it was just like rolling hills. I just navigated kind of through canyons and such, trying to follow roads or at least hiking paths. But we're just about to the airport, Huntington, and I got a few messages from the guy saying that there's a huge significant thunderstorm over Monument Valley area, which is out that way. You can see how dark it is on the horizon. So once I get safely on the ground here, I'm gonna evaluate that storm, see which way it's going. I'm pretty sure it's headed north, which is towards me. Uh, but we'll see if I can keep pushing on. I might just have to make the safe call and wait on the ground a little bit, but we'll see. Once I got over these mountains, now I'm down in this, I don't know if this is high desert, but I'm catching a pretty good tailwind. And I'm actually gonna do this whole flight just on my main tank without touching my auxiliary, uh, which is nice because when I fuel up, it's a pain to mix the oil. And when I mix it into the bladder, it's even worse because I have to uncap and cap and uncap and cap back and forth with, with my syringe. So pretty stoked that I don't have to do that. Let's see. I got 41 knots. I gotta head a little bit left. I haven't really gotten a good visual on what this airport looks like from Google Maps. But we're coming in hot. 6.1 nautical miles left. 9 minutes and 45 seconds to our destination. I've got some food in my bag and I was thinking about that. If I landed way back in the middle of nowhere, 
it would definitely suck. I always tried to keep a good landing spot that I could at least put it down and survive, even if it wasn't really accessible by roads. At least I've got like my tent, I've got a lighter to make a fire, I've got food and I've got water. So even if it took a day to get out, I would be fine. So I guess that's comforting. It is looking dark out that way. The message that Shane sent me said that the tops of the thunderstorm went up to 42,000 feet and it was, I don't know, 30 something miles wide. So that's pretty significant. It might hinder my progress for the day, but hopefully it might pass or blow out or something and I can keep moving forward this afternoon. Uh, by the looks of it right now, just from what I can see, I kind of feel like the safe bet is gonna be to stay on the ground for a little while because my next stop is out that way, kind of to the east. This storm is moving north, so it might just catch me and I don't wanna mess with a storm that big. I think I've spotted the airport directly ahead of me. Maybe they'll have coffee here. All right, I'm gonna come off the power and start descending just a little bit. Well, the GoPro battery lasted, but uh, I ran out of SD card space and I missed the landing. But I wish I got it because I came in this way, which turned out to be downwind because that windsock is lying to me. I thought I was gonna biff so hard in that dirt. I came in so fast but somehow I ran it out and stood it up. So the current situation, I have to go kind of like east southeast of here as my next stop. And the weather is actually just about pushing into the area of my next stop. So I think I'm gonna wait here for a while and just keep an eye on it. They've got a nice little shelter thing over there. Maybe an FBO. Yeah, I'll fuel up, we'll walk around. Probably gonna have to wait a little while for the weather and then it's gonna be the middle of the day and it's gonna be hot, so we'll see what happens. Always an adventure. So the scout's all fueled up, all my gear is stowed. I have been checking weather, and to me, I don't think these storms look that intense. They don't look like they're massive thunderstorms. They kind of look like they're just rain showers passing by. And I was gonna try to go to a midpoint, which is Green River, between here and Canyonlands, but now Green River's in rain. So I think it's just gonna be a waiting game. I'll see if it opens up enough that I can make it around the rain but I'm not really that afraid that it's gonna be kicking lots of turbulence and air movement because it's not like a really developed thunderstorm. So I'm gonna hit the shower in here. I'll dump my SD card for the GoPro and we'll just wait. And hopefully there'll be an opportunity to move to Canyonlands. I was talking to the airplane pilot. She said that it's a really nice facility there. They got Wi-Fi, they got everything. So if I can make it there for tonight, that would be golden. All right guys, I've made kind of a spur of the moment decision. I was about to get in the shower, but I got a call from the weather briefer and he said that it's only gonna get worse out there in Canyonlands and it's really south of Canyonlands that's the bad spot. He said by tonight it's probably not gonna clear out and if I can take the safe route and go north, just go for it now, basically. I also called the Canyonlands uh, AWOS and their current status out there is pretty high ceiling and clear visibility, no rain and calm winds. So we're gonna send a little midday flight. Hopefully it's a good call. Um, the alternative is I have a site called Green River that's right in the middle and if it's looking bad or I'm not going to make it, which shouldn't be an issue because it's 80 miles, if it's looking bad then I'll just
put it down in Green River. Motor's sketchy. Wing's a little sketchy. Please, let's not blow this launch. Feels good. Let's send it. time, man. It's just a rush to get off the ground. Let's check my heading out. So I'm taking kind of a safer route that keeps me more towards populated areas and by, or passes by Green River Airport. So that's my out. If I get halfway there and I'm not feeling it, then I might end up just having to set it down there and stay the night probably. I miss this airport. It's a nice place. Admittedly, I probably should have went right away rather than waiting around for a while, but it is what it is. I got my heading. I might gain a little altitude and just see what the wind's doing there. My motor is not doing good. When I just pull started it, now the pull starter isn't retracting smoothly, which I think is related to the clutch issue. So that kind of sucks. But as long as I start it on the ground and I'm careful, I shouldn't have any issues. Fingers crossed. 28 knots, not bad. Predicted a, about probably a two and a half hour flight. So that's getting close to my maximum range. Uh, everyone was talking about this storm. Uh, the weather briefer was even saying, this is not just like a pop-up afternoon thunderstorm. It's an actual large system that's pushed its way into the area. So I really need to keep an eye out. Right now I don't see anything that indicates bad weather, like real bad weather. There's no Virga, there's no Thunderheads, but I have to keep my eyes peeled for that because generally if you can see it, it can affect you. All right, everything's looking pretty good. I just feel super beat. I kind of feel so tired I could throw up kind of thing. But we will press onward. I'm gonna shut the GoPro down for now. Hopefully it should keep a charge and I won't have any SD card issues now. I'll catch up with you guys up ahead. Whatever happens, we'll see. It's pretty gray, and that's kind of the direction I'm headed. I'm going this way, like following this road straight, and then I'm kicking a right towards the gray area. But I can't tell relative distance how close the airport I'm headed to is in relation to that actual gray area. I think I'm gonna press onward. I've been checking radar and weather and once I get closer, I'll probably drop down lower just for the random possibility that something pops and I need to land immediately. I can get on the ground as soon as possible. I'm about a liter or two sh uh, less than my six liter mark, so four or five, which means I can dump my auxiliary tank in there. A little bit of rowdy air by these formations. It was worse back there when the sun was shining bright. Now, as I get into this area, off to my right, there's some restricted airspace. And then on either side of the Canyonlands, uh, the east side is Arches National Park. And then the actual other Canyonlands mapped on the sectional is kind of to the southwest. And I really shouldn't fly over either of those. So that's kind of why I'm making my entry headed kind of southeast and then I'm turning south to come in from the north so that I don't get up in those restricted areas. I think 
think I'll update you guys next once we get close to the airport. Let's hope for the best. Here we are. Canyonlands. Sounds like Candyland. So yeah, the weather didn't turn out to be that bad. This cloud layer is showing up on radar as green. But as I figured, it wasn't developing any rain, and it's not thunderstorms. Uh, however, not to take it lightly, down south farther, there are bigger thunderstorms, like a whole system that's actually starting to pop up uh, into nice red thunderstorms that I looked at on radar just a minute ago. So after this stop um, is Monticello, which is straight south of here pretty much. Right now the conditions, like the air feels great. It's nice and cool and smooth and there's barely any wind. It, it, if anything, I would just say it's calm. There's not much direction or speed to it. So I could make it to Monticello super easy, but that's putting me closer to the real danger zone where those thunderstorms are popping. Off to the left here is Arches National Park, and I would so love to just go tear it up in there. But one, we're in a race, and that wouldn't be really efficient. And two, that is a uh, national park area that I'm not allowed to fly over. So unfortunately, I can't do that, but there are other cool places that you can fly over. I really want to. It's been like a dream for the past couple years. I want to buy a van, like a sprinter van, and outfit it like as a camper slash paramotor hauler. I would love to take it out here, out west, particularly the southwest in this area, and just find beautiful sites and hang out there for a couple days and get to fly them like intimately. Like this whole race, I've seen so many beautiful places, but it's just kind of been straight line cruising over them. I would love to just spend a day and tear it up at the salt flats or something. So if you know anyone that has a good hookup on a sprinter van, hit me up. I'm gonna try harder to figure out what the wind direction is here because that last landing, I almost ate it so hard. I full flared and timed it right and everything, but I was still going so fast and I was running, like just stomping my feet, trying to stop and not fall. Sometimes I like to check my navigation as I come up on a place just to make sure I didn't calculate something horribly wrong and I like land at a factory and the airport's like three miles that way, like behind a hill. Canyonlands. It's so crazy. When I left that airport, it was hot. It started to be a little bit thermally. I flew over pretty high peak and then past those giant walls and now I'm here under a cloud and it's actually cold. It's like borderline, I should be wearing gloves. And the air is a lot more moist, given that there's lots of thick clouds and possible thunderstorms. That peak ahead, uh, I checked the sectional and it said it's like 11,000 feet or something and that's poking through the clouds. That's a big one. So as far as the other competitors, uh, Canyon, is I think the only guy left in race class. And he's catching up. He skirted around Salt Lake on the east side, the side that I was kind of afraid to tackle. And he's made up some ground. He's, I think, just about adjacent to Salt Lake. He's hot on my heels. If this weather holds me up, he might actually be able to catch up decently well uh, for the rest of today. And they got some nice looking planes here trying to find out where the fuel farm is. Maybe they have fuel trucks. I think I'm gonna choose to land in the grass because if it's dead calm or I get it wrong again, I don't want to face plant on asphalt. Checking for traffic. I don't see anybody. Uh, I see the fuel farm now. All right, I'm gonna try to land right near this heliport. It's gonna be kind of on gravel. That was much smoother than my last one. Yeah, buddy. That looks like a fuel farm over there. I haven't eaten anything today other than a blueberry muffin and a little Snickers bar. I've got some jerky 
and uh, some other food, so I think I'm going to eat some of that. Alright guys, I have made the slightly risky move again. I'm rolling the dice to continue onward to Monticello. It's only um, 60 miles away, so I might end up just kind of speed barring it for a little while because short distance, I'll have plenty of fuel to get there. The wind's calm. I just want to get there before the storms get any closer, so... Let's see if we can get this baby started. Sketch City with no clutch and a sad starter. There we go. You got it. No. Not a happy motor. to bring my idle up a bit to compensate for this clutch job. Man, I will really be upset if I make it so close to the finish line and I blow the clutch. Let's see if that'll do her. I'd say that might just work. Once it's on my back, I can't really pull start it. Oh, I am so beat. I feel bad I haven't put any updates on YouTube. But I've just been in the zone, cruising. Yeah, the wind is very variable, but it's so light, I don't think it really matters which direction I go. Got to make this one count. And then it's off to Monticello. My poor motor, dude. I feel so bad. It's whining, clutch problems. did it that fell downwind. We're not even at high altitude here. That was tough. The wing popped right up and waited for me. But by the time I caught up, I had to run like hell. All right, you guys probably know the drill by now. Get up, get a little altitude, pick a heading, check my data. I haven't trimmed out yet, but I have 29 knots, which puts me in an hour and 50 minutes to Monticello. Is it Monticello? I don't know. I like Monticello better. Hopefully this place has some good facilities. It's a county or city owned airport. So I don't know. I just hope they have a courtesy car because I haven't really eaten all day and I could really go into some town and get some food. Well, I'm going to take full advantage of the smoothness of the air because the, the cloud cover is keeping thermals, turbulence from popping up and it's so calm. I'm just going to sit here on my phone probably, reply to some messages, watch the beautiful landscape pass by, and I'll see you guys at Monticello Monticello. this place. 
Now the wind's out of the southeast, which is like that way. And you can see there's rain out there. I flew through a very slight drizzle back there. And I've just been half speed barring it, trying to get to this airport before I get caught in the rain. I have plenty of fuel and plenty of daylight, but these skies are just very concerning. I think I'm gonna to be totally fine though, because I can see the airport and I can see that that rain is way over there. But did you guys see those freaking canyons back there? That was probably the highlight of this trip so far for me. I love flying next to giant cliff walls and pillars like that. Uh, my hands were fine until I started hitting this cooler, moist air and hitting speed bar to go faster. So this airport is actually, it's got two parts. One part's like decommissioned. So I'm gonna have to see where I wanna land. I think this is most definitely where I'm going to stay the night. I'm well ahead and the weather is not good. And I just want some food, hopefully a shower if they've got one, and a nice place to sleep. I'm really hoping that they have some nice facilities here maybe a little bit more welcoming than the last place. If they have a courtesy car, it will be the best day ever. Part two. Oh man, fatigue. Fatigue is real. We're at relatively high altitude here. I think this airfield is 6,000 feet. That peak up there I think was 10 or 11. I cannot wait to be on the ground. <laughs> I am all flown out today. Hopefully get a nice meal. That would be prime. A nice meal, a good place to sleep, and then the trifecta would be a shower. Woo! We are making it just in time. It's starting to drizzle harder, and it hurts my face. A little bit of rain isn't bad, but if it opens up, that's not good. This place has been tempting me. It's felt like it was right at my fingertips this whole time, because I've been fighting kind of a cross headwind, a pretty strong one, so it's been tough. It looks like I see the fuel farm. See, this is the decommissioned strip I was talking about. Uh, I need to slow down. These raindrops hurt my face. I can't see. All right, check it out. We got a couple buildings, a fuel farm, and a nice lot to land in. Hopefully one of those is my FBO. And hopefully, I see another um, Crown Vic. Maybe if I've lucked out, that's another courtesy car. Wouldn't that be nice? We've almost made it. Just gotta clean everything up. These don't have to go down, but I'll put them down. Oh, dude, if that's a courtesy car, I'm gonna be so stoked. That's my ticket to happiness right there. Which way is the wind going? I guess this is into the wind. Yes. Oh, there's puddles here. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm a little bit damp from that rain shower action. I don't know if I should even bother feeling right now. Damn. My hands are numb. I feel like I should find shelter for my motor and wing. And I'll just worry about gas later. I can transfer with my bladder just so that my gear stays dry. That was a rough day of flying. <laughs> totally beat, but totally stoked at the same time. And if that there is a courtesy car and I can go drive wherever my heart desires for dinner. I'm gonna be so happy. I'm stupid, I should have landed over there. I shouldn't have landed by the fuel farm. Pilot's lounge and restrooms. That's what that sign says. Oh yeah. I think I just hit the jackpot. If this is all that it's cracked up to be, I just made the best decision to make this flight. All right. On clip. Are you freaking serious? They have a coffee machine here, dude. Do you believe this? 
Look at this place. That's gonna be my bed tonight. There's heat. It's perfectly clean. We've got a bathroom. No shower, I don't think. But that's okay. This place is freaking amazing. There's like a little check thing here, like a, a, a welcome log. You can leave comments on how nice the facility is. They leave the keys for the car on the welcome log. So I'm gonna get some coffee going because that was super cold. The scout's a little bit wet. My wing got a little bit wet, but overnight it should be good. I have outlets to charge things. I have Wi-Fi, coffee, water, and I'm gonna go out for dinner hopefully. Freaking amazing. That 60 mile stretch was rough, but totally worth it. Best call ever. This place is the freaking bomb. The time has come. We're going to see how the courtesy car handles. So the weather has improved a little bit. It's still cloudy and sketchy skies, but I wouldn't fly in it. I'm happy where I'm at. So let's uh, check out this sick ride, dude. <laughs> Paint flaking off. Got the freaking light, the rusted out roof. Yeah. Oh yeah. Check this action out. That's custom. Well, we made it to the restaurant. We got a check engine light, ABS brake light, and a funny smell when the heat comes on, but she drives. All right, this night is slowly taking a turn for the worse. Um, I got back in the car and came back and on the gate it says call this number for the gate code to get in and I called the number and no one answers. So the car's currently parked outside of the gate, which isn't a big deal because I locked it and I put the key in here. They'll find it eventually, I left a voicemail. I kind of feel bad, but it's whatever. Next, I go to fill up the Scout at the fuel farm and the fuel farm won't connect. It declines all of my cards. So I think there's something wrong with the fuel farm, but I just removed my gas tank and I think that's the easiest way to do it. I'm gonna drive all the way to the gas station, fill up my gas tank, reinstall it, and hopefully not make a huge mess. But that's about all for tonight. I'm just gonna do that escapade and then maybe do a, a little YouTube live stream action. I've never done it before, but I feel bad I haven't kept everyone updated because I've been like in the zone, eat, sleep, fly. Tomorrow, I've plotted my route and it's 300 miles, which is totally doable in one day if the winds are favorable. So maybe next episode, I'll be hitting the finish line. Um, as long as I get this fuel situated and as long as the Scout keeps running with its bum clutch. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy these videos. I am going to get that done and get some sleep. So to the next one, peace out with the gas tank. Bzz.